should have a conversation about you know how we're going to pay for it. We want to get people's thoughts and ideas and get on the record. So we both have formed the joint subcommittee hearings of the Senate Transportation and Appropriation Two Committees of the Senate, and we'll hold um, a number of hearings throughout the <coughs> state in the upcoming months. Uh, today we had one in, uh, here in the Capitol, um, and we will have one in Edwardsville, Decatur, Peoria, Chicago, and Elgin, um, and we may add and modify th these uh, uh, destinations and places of location and date, but generally we are going to try to hold to this calendar to hold these hearings to get uh, the uh, uh, thoughts and opinions uh, of people uh, statewide when it comes to uh, this, uh, this exercise on assessing the capital needs and, uh, and uh, the revenue side of the, of the house. Um, just to kind of remind everyone, um, we do have the third largest infrastructure in the country. Uh, the, the, 20, in the American Society of Civil Engineers graded Illinois' infrastructure as a C minus. Accord, and according to them, this means that our infrastructure requires attention and is facing increased vulnerability uh, at, at risk. We saw what happened just recently on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. Uh, the, uh, the, um, with the um, bridge uh, that uh, disjoined and shut down an important uh, uh, route in the state Route 41, or better known as uh, Lakeshore Drive. We have the third largest bridge inventory in the nation. Um, uh, these, uh, you know, 2,000, over 2,000 of these bridges are classified as structurally deficient today. Um, the states and roadways are, are, are ranked the third worst nationally for travel delay excess fuel consumed, truck congestion cost, and total congestion costs. So we need to fix this now, but uh, we need the help of the people, but also need to attract the support of the business community and of labor to get the job done here in Illinois. So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce to you the co-chair of the committee, uh, Senator Menard, an expert in uh, revenue and budget and finance. Thank you, Senator Sandoval. Um, I want to echo what I said today in the hearing. I appreciate your leadership on this issue. Um, this was uh, uh, came about because of Senator Sandoval's leadership and uh, pitching this idea to uh, the President of the Senate. And uh, today we have uh, under our belt our first, uh, I would say, successful hearing in starting to outline the needs of the state. Uh, so I want to start with with a with a big number. Um, if you uh, listen to the testimony from the Department of Transportation today, uh, the acting secretary used the number 79 million, 79 million. That's the number of square feet of bridges in Illinois that are in critical need of repair. So there's 79 million square feet of bridge space uh, that spans um, every county of the state, urban and rural, Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative areas uh, that are in critical <coughs> need of repair. I, I start off with that because I think it underscores uh, the magnitude of what we face today and also the importance of the task at hand. So uh, a little bit of um, kind of overarching um, conversation that I think we should have, and this is uh, things that uh, Senator Sandoval and I have put together and have been brought to us. Um, I think he used this number. There are more than 730 state bridges uh, today that need maintenance and updates. Uh, between 13 billion and 15 billion with a B is needed for highway maintenance over the next 10 years. Our highway capacity needs are growing. We heard that in testimony today. And we all know that when we uh, get behind the wheel of our <coughs> cars and drive through the state. Our airports are in need of a $250 million capital investment, and that does not include O'Hare or Midway airports. That's just every other airport in the state. Public transit needs, very important to moving people to and from work 
um, in all parts of the state. Uh, their needs rack up to about $19.1 billion today for upgrades. Railroad needs, uh, which is another thing that Senator Sandoval has led on uh, during his time here in the Senate, uh, their needs uh, amount to about $4 billion for freight rail and $800 million for passenger rail. Our river locks and dams, of course, are very important to moving commerce. Um, the list goes on and on, and that doesn't even touch vertical construction. And we heard um, in great detail today the needs of community colleges and universities around the state and how many of those projects um, have been on hold for upwards of, I think, some over 12, 12 years now. So that, th that is uh, needs that will, uh, if met, will keep students in Illinois, will grow programs, will bring in new job training uh, classes to all parts of the state, and that's something that we look to support. Then on the local level, of course, we have local sewer and water and construction projects in communities, uh, which I think is important for us to underscore. We want this to be a community-led uh, uh, process. Uh, we want to try to build the case for capital investment from the ground level up. Um, uh, Senator and I uh, both represent districts that are in great <coughs> need of investment at the local level, and that means for municipal governments, county government perhaps, non-for-profit organizations, uh, groups and individuals that uh, do the good work of the state um, in their respective capacities. Uh, those organizations haven't had investment uh, since Governor Quinn's program uh, was passed about 10 years ago. So um, I'm looking forward to the hearings that we have uh, laid out, and um, the goal here is to not just build the case for what we need, uh, but also, that's the easy part, uh, but build the case for making sure that it's paid for. Um, this is, a not, it is not going to work unless we have the ability to pay for it, and that's going to take a broad and difficult uh, conversation to take place, but. Uh, that's what we hope to get out of uh, what we have set forward in terms of having um, a combined effort between the Senate Transportation Committee and uh, the Senate Appropriations to Committee. Senator Sandoval. Just to add a, a last note on our uh, comments here this afternoon, uh, Governor Pritzker uh, mentioned in his uh, budget address yesterday uh, his vision that to ensure that minority contractors uh, get their fair share and participate in state contracts. Um, as an advocate uh, and uh, of trying to create greater access for minority contractors in state government, joined by my colleague, uh, Senator Menar, who's um, also been a major advocate of, great, of greater access for diverse communities here in the Illinois Senate. Um, um, we're going to rebuild Illinois and improve Illinois, um, but we've got to put um, a diverse group of men and women uh, to do the work. We need to ensure that we hire contractors to implement these infrastructure improvements and provide opportunities for minorities and, and women and veteran-owned firms. We heard yesterday uh, uh, from IDOT that their numbers in terms of hiring minority contractors uh, need to improve. The hearings in the Transportation Committee on uh, yesterday and uh, the numbers are, are 7.3 for uh, Asian Indian, 3.5 for Asian Pacific, 7.5 for African American, 11 for female Caucasian and 4.8 for Latino. These numbers are not reflective of the demographics of our state, and this needs to change immediately. Just remind, I reminded the uh, folks at IDOT and reminded a number of folks today uh, in our, in our uh, capital uh, uh, hearings today from the Illinois uh, uh, Higher Ed, Illinois, Illinois Board of Higher Ed, Capital Development Board, um, to name a few, that reminded them that the state's demographic population of Latinos is 17%, and that the African American population is 15%, and that the Asian American, uh, the Asian Indian population is 
6%. Not to say to remind them that the female population is 51%. The numbers historically at IDOT, the Tollway, the CDB, uh, higher ed, the universities, agencies of state government that are asking for greater investments in their capital infrastructure programs to build buildings, to build highways, to build parks. Um, their numbers do not reflect the demographics and the diversity of the state. They must and will do better uh, when we get done with this exercise of, of, of passing a capital bill because Senator Menard and I are along with the leadership that will be provided by Governor Pritzker are, are going to make every effort to ensure that the, the numbers do not remain stagnant and that they move closer to reflecting the demographics of our great state. With that, uh, any questions? So I would, I would say probably not. Um, so the goal of this is to um, hear from local uh, leadership, local organizations, uh, local governments uh, to build the case so that, first of all, we know what the demands are, and second of all, so we can fully account for what the needs are. I mean, I think we could probably come up with some pretty good um, estimates today, but we want this to be driven from very much from local uh, from a local perspective. So that's going to take time. So I, I, I think the answer is probably not. I don't count that as failure by, uh, by any measure uh, because we want to do this the right way and we want to make sure that we address as many needs as possible. And that's the purpose of this is um, we, we have great diversity in our state uh, and its people and its, in ge and its geography. And I think we're going to see that diversity uh, from what we hear from those that testify before us uh, in this uh, various set of hearings across the state. Um, our goal is to put everything that we have together, uh, make it uh, a publicly consumable uh, data set, and we're still working out how to do that, but that's something that's important to Senator Sandoval and I, that everything that we get, you know, for example, what was given to us today uh, in the joint committee hearing is going to be a public document um, that is going to be posted on our website so that everybody in the, in the state can see the details of what we're seeing. So are you guys going to recommend methods to pay for this, or does that have to come from somebody else? So I would, I would say we could get there, Doug. We could get there. Um, the, the first task is to assess the need and build the case. Um, I would hope that everyone who walks into a hearing uh, with us uh, to testify is there because they understand that the need is tremendous. Um, but. I think we're, I don't speak for, no one speaks for Marty, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but we, we have said it now multiple times. We said it here, we said it up in 212 that we're not going to recommend a bill that isn't fully paid for. So the last time Illinois issued new bonds, I think it was in August of last year, leading its way to going from two to double A to three, which is their lowest investment grade. substantial uh, increase in motor fuel taxes, sales taxes rather, so it's like uh, dedicated revenue uh, since bonds don't fall down as junk stock. Yeah, we, we asked the, uh, the governor's budget director that question today. Uh, we asked Director Sturm that question, um, and it was, uh, the, the answer was, uh, the answer is obvious, the answer is yes. So any, any time that the state issues debt, there has to be a dedicated revenue stream. There's any number of ways to do that. It could be using existing revenue growth and existing revenue streams that exist today in state law. It could be new revenue streams that grow over time. It could be a revenue stream that comes online two years from now that's built into a long-term program. So um, I, would, I would point you to, to her answer to the question today uh, that I think both of us posed at various points in time. Follow up that one of the big ironic side effects of better fuel efficiency and yeah. elect electric vehicles is that motor fuel tax revenues do not grow in the same pace as traffic on the roads. Um, but then you have to look to 
something else uh, after electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles. Yeah, I would, I would say just for my own purposes, so I don't speak for anybody on this, um, I, I don't think that at the outset of this process that we should start discounting any proposal <coughs> that is gonna come to us in detail over the next several weeks as we have public hearings. We, we learned this with school funding. Um, there were a whole bunch of proposals that came to the table that were just, I, I would tell you, complete nonsense at the end of the day that weren't gonna work, but, but I don't think our task is to start discounting things before they even come forward. So I'm not going to say today that, that there is anything off the table. If there's a credible idea that data supports is a good thing for the state, um, I, I don't think there's going to be any easy things, by the way. But if it's, if it's credible, then, then it ought to have um, a full public hearing devoted to it. And if it's incorporated into a final product, and that to me is how you build coalitions to get something like this done. Yeah, no, I think that the, uh, I echo the, uh, the sentiments of Senator Menard that um, there are traditional finance models the state has used to finance these capital bills, you know, or anywhere from, you know, gas tax to uh, license plate fees to uh, service fees, increased to other fees. Uh, um, there have been other novel ideas that have been floated out there over the last couple of months to finance the capital bill. I think we are are going to also invite academia to come forward. The academia, the business, uh, industry, um, you know, all the, all the policy think tanks that have had reports out since 2009, they need to come forward today, right? They're all, there have been a lot of advocates, policy advocates on our infrastructure, both from vertical to horizontal, who have put studies out in regards to uh, possible revenue sources, possible financing models, we're going to get them on the record. We invite them today, I'm calling them out, to come to the table to go public about, uh, to get behind their, their recommendations for the best solution to finance a capital bill. It's, it's the day of reckoning. Senator, you spoke quite a bit about diversity. How do you go about ensuring that that diversity will be part of a very large capital bill? Well, we first started out with uh, leadership, and that's uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker and the first African-American Lieutenant Governor, Juliana Stratton. I look forward to both of them. They have now have stepped forward, uh, not only by their election, but also by word that they are going to put forth and ensure that minority contractors get their fair share of state contracts. N not to say that there are, there's current state law that mandates uh, participation of minority contractors. I'll only refer to the, the state BEP, the state business enterprise program, that is state statute, which, which dictates that uh, no less than 20% of the state's investment uh, should include minor, no, minority contractors. You know, uh, the, ter the state has done a terrible job, you know, uh, for example, the public a, a segment of state government, the public universities are averaging around 5%. They, have, they are not complying with state law to ensure that at least 20% of their buy is made with minority contractors. So... That's just an example, and so uh, we, today at our hearing, uh, as we questioned the IBHE and the CDB, uh, and we questioned IDOT uh, the night before, um, there are some flaws on oversight and compliance by our own state agencies to ensure uh, that they are doing their best efforts and what's required under law to uh, ensure these outcomes. So we're going to go back and... Uh, uh, they're part of this process, and uh, you'll you'll be seeing legislative proposals and fixes to uh, ensure uh, a greater uh, compliance with even current state laws. What kind of change do you want? Like, how do you punish a public university for not meeting that twenty percent contract? Well, there is that you know it's such a constant. I think if the state law requires them to spend twenty percent of uh, they're by with minority contractors, 
maybe they shouldn't receive state dollars for capital construction. If the state law requires them and they have failed to comply with state law, then perhaps maybe the Illinois Board of Higher Education should, you know, have a process to certify them in noncompliance, therefore not subject to receipt of public dollars for capital. All I know is that when I tell my children back at home that, you know, these are the rules of the road in the house and when they fail to meet them, well, maybe they don't, they don't get a bump in their allowance or something. You know, there, there's consequences. There should be consequences for, comply, for failure to comply with state law. That's just an idea. Can I throw something in, too? There, there, um, I think part of the challenge, part of the legitimate challenge is that outside of the Chicago land area, the availability of minority contractors is it's a very thin line of folks. So we ought to use this opportunity. If we're going to pass a major capital bill uh, to impact the state, we should use this opportunity to grow the number of, of uh, minority-owned businesses, firms that qualify for state construction contracts, I, either large or small, and we should, we should use this opportunity to grow that number um, so that when we roll this thing out and it is done over the course of 10 plus years, that we don't end up with fewer, um, we end up with more. I think that helps, co that helps communities all over the state and it grows jobs in places that, that desperately need it. So this is an opportunity um, that has a statewide impact. I think too often times when we talk about these things, they focus solely on Chicago. Um, but uh, people in this room have done reports about this downstate. So this is an opportunity, and I think this is a place where um, the legislature can step up and work with the new administration to make sure that one of the positive outcomes of this is uh, more minority-owned small businesses, construction firms, um, engineering firms in the state uh, when, when we're done. You know, we talk a lot about uh, uh, our challenging minority communities in Chicago and Decatur and Peoria and Rockford and in other cities of downstate of Illinois, but we do nothing to spur the economic growth of these minority, largely growing minority communities. Um, I, I think, this, again, as Senator Martins, this is an opportunity. Not to say that we also must remind uh, state government that they must invest in Illinois. You know, I see two, two uh, if I look at some of the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation's uh, awards as well as the Illinois Tollway Awards, we see, you know, I, you know as, as I looked at some of the, um, the data, we're awarding hundreds of millions of dollars to non-Illinois <coughs> corporate-based companies. What are we doing? Why are we awarding if we don't have Illinois corporate-based engineering construction companies? I understand, but they exist. And so I don't see, uh, I believe that Illinois corporations should be our first priority of investments, right? Minority companies. Right, um, and if if they're not if they we don't have the capacity, uh, then maybe we should look elsewhere. But we, we've got some real issues uh, in regards to um, uh, our lack of investments in Illinois-based companies as well as minority companies. We need to grow wealth in Illinois and keep it in Illinois. Well, professional services are not low, low, uh, not based on low bid. They're professional qualifications. So whether you're talking about legal, uh, engineering, architect, IT, accounting, those uh, services, uh, multi-billion dollar investments by the state, uh, they're not governed by uh, low bid. They're governed by just uh, professional qualifications. And that is somewhat subjective in nature. In the hearing this morning, what did you hear that you didn't know or that you didn't expect to hear? Well, I, I, Dave, I would say the, the number that I gave earlier, the 79 million square feet of bridge, I mean, that's a, that's a 
um, it's a stunning it's a stunning number um, that jumped out at me um, the the depth of what the community college board presented today uh, struck me as um, l not just long overdue but those projects every project on that ICCB list will result in job creation not just to construct it but for years to come because that's the business that community colleges in, uh, are in today in Illinois. That's what they do is workforce development, workforce training, uh, an affordable education option. And that's what employers, especially manufacturers, um, which, which uh, Moody's just released a report saying that is an incredible bright spot in Illinois today and it's driving the economy. Every one of those projects at the community college board is gonna result in that. So we have to think about the challenge in those terms um, and those are two things, at least for me, that, uh, that, that, you know, just came screaming at me that support the need for a robust capital plan. 79 million square feet of bridges that have to be repaired, have to be repaired. Community colleges um, that support workforce development, workforce training, career pathways um, in communities uh, where their footprint is that desperately need those things. Those construction projects are going to pay dividends at community colleges for years to come. I'm already an ICCB budget appointee here for this, so would it make sense to start out slowly and then maybe hope some of the bidders that are uh, honoring can go up and then we would pay less in the next time around? It could, it could. And I think that, um, you know, that of course uh, would that conversation would happen toward the end of the process when what we're putting together has to be integrated into an operations budget. So while appropriations for capital are separate than operations, the mechanism to pay for it has to fit into a balanced budget framework. So uh, the provisions of all that have to, have to be worked out. I personally would think that um, there's gonna be a lot of projects that are shovel ready. We know that, especially when it comes to roads. I could, you know, we could just all go take a walk around the Capitol building and find shovel ready projects um, in the city of Springfield that have been on hold for years. Um, but I would say that we have to be thoughtful about um, issuance of bonds and Director Sturm talked about this today, uh, the timing of these projects over the course of many years, making sure that we efficiently use the resources that we are undoubtedly going to have to raise in order to pay for the projects. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks for your time, have a great weekend.